Come join us as we learn all about the second president, from his birthplace to his final resting place here in Quincy, Massachusetts, with Walk With History. So I'm at Hancock Adams Common, and they have a statue of John Adams here. And it's pretty cool. My kids are running on the grass right there. But it's a pretty cool statue with his cane. It says, Farmer, Architect of American Independence, Statesman, John Adams, October 30th, 1735 to July 4th, 1826. He dies on the 4th of July, same day as Thomas Jefferson. They die within hours of each other. And they hadn't spoken for a while. And that day, that they had just kind of reconciled it before they died. So second president of the United States, 1797 to 1801. First president, first vice president of the United States, 1889 to 1791. First American minister of the court of St. James. But a bunch of interesting things about him. So I will, and this is all in front of the statue. I think it's fairly recent because it says seven, 2015 here on the statue. But... Church of the Presidents, built in 1828. John Quincy Adams proposed the church become permanent resting place of his parents. church and got to see the graves of John Adams and his wife Abigail, John Quincy Adams and his wife Louisa. John Quincy is his first name. He actually doesn't have a middle name. Quincy is not his middle name. And Abigail Adams' grandfather was Colonel Charles Quincy. And that's where the name comes from here. That's where they get that name. This used to be Braintree, Massachusetts, and then they split it. And it was going to be Hancock because John Hancock is born not too far away from here, but John Adams was the second president and he kind of wanted a place named after his wife's grandfather. And so it became Quincy. So this is the town of Quincy. That's where you can go see the crypts of John Adams and John Quincy Adams. And they're buried side by side, two presidents together with their wives. So there's a cemetery over here we're going to go look at, and then another statue, and then let's head over to John Adams' birth house. So I had done the John Adams statue in the same common, and this is why they call it the Adams-Hancock Common, is a statue of John Hancock. So another cool colonial statue. Um, has his signature on the bottom, that infamous signature from the Declaration of Independence. It's very big and very proud. He's letting people know, I'm signing this. I'm signing my death sentence if we don't win. Merchant Patriot Statesman John Hancock, January 23rd, 1737, October 8th, 1793. So again, just across 
from John Adams statue. And in between is the church where the graves are of John Adams and John Quincy. Uh, we're trying to beat the History Channel with number of subscribers. We're only like three million away. I'm good at math. So don't forget to like and subscribe to Walk With History. This is the information about the Hancock Cemetery, 1640. And we're going to walk in and just look around. What's interesting about this Hancock, what's interesting about this Hancock Cemetery over here is this is where John Adams and Abigail, John Quincy and Louisa were all at before being moved over to the church. And it was in this crypt right here that says J.Q. Adams where they were. And now it's blank, but these are where they were, War of 1812. And then you got Ebenezer Adams over here. But this is John Quincy Adams. So this is where John Adams was with Abigail, and then John Quincy was with Louisa. I'm at 141 Franklin Street in Quincy, Massachusetts. 141 Franklin Street in Quincy, Massachusetts. And I'm a friend of the birthplace of the second president of the United States, John Adams. So he was born here in 1735. Um, and then John Quincy Adams, his son, and this is where John Adams lived with Abigail, is born here in this house in 1767. This house is where, this is where Abigail Adams managed the farm. This is where she wrote all those letters to John. And I got a quick tour from the uh, park ranger who's here. And John Adams, born here, raised here, family was here, oldest of three boys. And their father was the deacon in town, which also meant he did a lot of meetings, government meetings. There's a trial held here. He made sure each of his sons got land because they could vote. So very diplomatic, these early influences of John Adams, his father, making sure each boy gets land in the family, all three, not just the oldest, all three, so they would be able to vote because you needed to be a male and own land to vote in America at that time. So this is the house that John Quincy Adams is born in. So this is where John Adams will live with Abigail. And again, it's right beside the other home and chimney right in the middle, but this must be where she would write the letters from. I took some pictures in the other house. I was able to get in, the park ranger let me in, and I took some pictures of where they believe John Adams' desk was. The, the big kitchen, and the reason why the kitchen was so big is because it would also serve as a meeting room for his dad, who was the deacon, to have people in there. But this is the house where John Adams lived with Abigail. I'm gonna knock on John Adams' door. <laughs> How cool is that? I just knocked on John Adams' door. <laughs> Can Abigail come out? Leave the kids at home with you, John, and Abigail come out with us ladies and have a good time. How many father-son presidents have we had? I think just two, just the Bushes and the Adams. To know that John Adams, his father, had such an influence on him with the government and the meetings, then with making sure his sons had land, and then Abigail is such an influence on John, and then of course on her children. It's neat to somebody is the wife and the mother of a president. That is unique, Abigail Adams. Barbara Bursch and Abigail Adams are probably the two women that own that distinction. It was just so neat to be here. It was so neat to visit the resting sites of the second president and the sixth president and their wives. And so neat to be here in Quincy, Massachusetts. So if you ever get a chance to come out here and visit the National Park Service sites for John Adams, I suggest that you do it, because it was really cool. So thank you for joining me today, and on to my next Walk With History.